So, have you ever wondered what the fate of your business is going to be with the costs of shipping, the exchange rate, and everything seems to be skyrocketing every day? The last time I checked today, RMB was already 135 or 138 or so. I don't know which of them because everybody seems to have different rates. And you're just there wondering, how do I match this rising cost of goods with like the price, the selling price and all that? Will customers like realign? Will customers understand and all that? Then my dear, I just want to tell you that you are not alone. You are not alone. Shipping fees are crazy right now. Um, the custom fees is on one side. The the exchange rate is also crazy. Like it's like it's skyrocketing every minute over here in China, and it's something that you don't even have control over. And you're thinking about how do I meet up? How what do I do? Well, you're not alone. Everybody's in the same uh, boat with you. Like I literally had to even return some customers' money earlier today because I was like, I can't do this. Like I'm losing money. I'm not even making it's not like it's not profitable if I you know keep doing that like if I decide to like take the money and the next day I don't know what the rate is so here's something I want to tell you you are not alone but there's something smart importers are doing right now which I think you should jump on now there are two things which I'm going to explain in this video I'm going to tell you two ways that you can make your importation business or whatever kind of business that you do survive with everything that is going on right now with the economy recession whatever it is that people wherever you are whatever they call it in your location now if you want your business to thrive there are two directions that you you can take like i told you is it that you are a big importer or you are trying to source for goods locally when I say you're a big importer or major importer, I'm not talking about people who order in small quantities, mini importation. No, I'm talking about the importation giants, the people who know the in and out of how the business works. These are people who have been doing this business for a long time and they know how to bargain good prices. They import in thousands, in hundreds, not little. One thing people don't know about this whole buying and selling thing, especially when you're sourcing from factories and all that, is that quantity matters. The higher the quantity, the lower the price. So if you want to stay profitable, even in this like current dispensation and everything that is going on, you need to up your quantities and renegotiate with your supplier for better prices. When you up your quantities and renegotiate with your buyer, for better prices you are going to be more profitable you can decide to put your goods in the sea and then you would also be able to get lower shipping rate you can even renegotiate your shipping costs with your shipper and tell them oh i'm shipping this hundreds of kg or this um amount of number of cvm and i want a lower cost so the larger your goods is the bragging rights you have, the more negotiation power you have with either your shipper or your your or your shipper or your um, supplier. So that is one route. Another route that you can take for you to be profitable this period. In fact, I have a couple of customers that I usually order like small pieces from me. I will just even check like their messages right now. They are doing so well like what they do right now is that they do local arbitrage like they source goods locally and what i did for them was i gave them contacts of like um big manufacturers that i've personally i have a personal relationship with and i've done business with them over time when they come to china to buy their goods or i help them to complete their transactions with factories over here so what does major importers do is that they buy in large quantity let's say one shoe they could buy 500 pieces different colors they could buy a thousand pieces when you buy in that quantity there's no way that you'll be getting a you won't be getting a lower cost than someone who buys five pieces or three pieces so my customers what i have done for them is that i decided to connect them to contacts for local arbitrage 
no when you're doing local arbitrage you just don't want to like um you know jump into any stuff and all that you need to have a definite niche like you have to find a niche you don't want to do bad shoes clothes and um, everything like yeah, some people do beauty products and all that. Even if you want to do back shoes, just make sure that those are the things that you are doing and you are not like um trying to like go outside of your niche all the time. Like you're literally jack of all trade and master of none. No, that is not how it works. The first thing you want to do when you're doing local arbitrage is find a niche. Once you find a niche, if it's bags, choose bags and begin to do it. If it's fabrics, choose fabrics and begin to do it. Those, this is what my customers did and they are succeeding right now. A lot of them who used to cry about shipping costs, custom fees, local transportation are no longer having issues. Why? Because I connected them to the major importers. These importers have huge storage houses all over nigeria and beyond even in the u.s different countries and those people buying large quantities so their prices are way lower sometimes you would even find out that those people their prices are lower than when you buy directly from china or wherever you're buying from and then when you bring it back it's more like it's even better to buy locally so the first thing i would advise you is find a niche if you're trying just pivot your business take time out and try to pivot your business like right now define like change things turn things around now choose one niche bag shoes clothes whatever it is you want to do when you choose a niche niche you'll be able to say okay because the reason i'm emphasizing on choosing a niche is because these big importers don't just do everything they have either bags they have either shoes one of them is what they do so you need to choose a niche once you choose a niche then Go to local markets around you. When I mean local markets, I don't mean the smaller ones. I mean like the major wholesale markets. If you're in Lagos, you want to visit Balogun markets. You want to visit trade fair markets. You want to also visit um, Yaba, maybe. But the major wholesale markets around you visit those markets. If I were you, I would also go as far as going to Onicha, Aba and those major wholesale hubs to connect with people that actually sell things in my niche let's say i'm a bag seller i would go there get the major importer please don't buy from don't get in contact of people that buy from people no you're not going to make any profit from there buy look for the major importers and connect with them when you connect with them tell them that you want to be reselling their products and then they could add you to their customer's contact list or whatever it is. And then you'll begin to see their products. You can even buy directly from them as well. So that is one thing that you want to do. Visit that place. Remember step number one is choose a niche. Step number two, visit the wholesale markets around you. Connect with the major importers. Please don't connect with the ones that are buying from people. No, you're not going to make any profit that way. What you want to do next is then begin to repost their products. Let's say I sell shoes and I now have contacts of shoe manufacturers around me. I will now begin to post their products on my WhatsApp, post their products on um, Telegram, wherever it is that you know your customers are, Instagram, Facebook, wherever it is, you can repost their products. If you have a physical store, you can buy a few pieces of this product and test it in your store and see how they do. Now, you don't need to have so many sellers because trust me, China is like a recycle stuff. Most of people like they sell the same thing, while some people they actually make unique stuff and then by the time they bring it, some people are copying. Get, just get the contents of this major suppliers, focus on their products, and then, you know, begin to market it. You get, so if you have a physical store, market it in your store, display it, and see how people do, well, like how the customers react to it. Now, if you don't have a physical store, repost it on your social media, and see how people respond to it, too, if you get sales. Then once you get sales, you sell your, send your orders to the um, seller, and then once you get and uh, once you they receive your order they're going to mail it to wherever it is that you want it to be mailed to this applies for different products whether you're doing kitchen utensils you're doing 
um automo you're doing automobile parts you're doing um furniture you're doing fashion whatever it is that you're doing it applies to all types of businesses now when you do this you'll realize that you don't have to deal with the stress of importation anymore the stress is transferred to the major importer all you just need to do is put c products add price add sorry add your profit and post or resell that's it it just takes away the stress from you and that is the way for if i in the u.s most people don't buy directly from china they buy from people who manufacture in china in bulk and bring down to the u.s to sell so why don't you adopt that pro, pro, um, approach right now so that you can be able to you know bring your profit take your profit up there because with the exchange rate right now the cost of shipping is crazy you would wish you bought those products in nigeria literally so i would encourage you to please think of how you want to source your products within nigeria by looking for the contacts of those major suppliers so i'm just giving you this trick now this is what smart importers are doing like my customers that I used to buy goods from china or us wherever for right now they are sourcing goods locally and it is paying off one thing i used to tell people is that at the end of the day the future of importation in nigeria or anywhere else would still be a blend of local and international meaning that you'll be buying locally and also you will buy internationally so even if you don't want to cut off importation entirely think of a way that you could blend the two source products from wherever you are nigeria locally and then you can decide to buy internationally or better still source all your products locally so that you would not have to deal with this skyrocketing shipping cost, skyrocketing ship exchange fee deal. Remember that aside these issues, you are still dealing with a problem of um, language barrier. You're dealing with a problem of culture. You're dealing with a problem of every other thing. You're still dealing with those issues. So save yourself the stress. Find suppliers within Nigeria or wherever you are and begin to buy from them so that you can be free of this whole chaos that is happening in the economy right now so in my next video i'll be sharing like details of like contacts that i'm sure of contacts that i've verified people have worked in the past that have helped in china wherever it is to do transactions and all that, that you can buy from they have big warehouses assortment of goods and all that i'll share bags shoes different types of products if you want me to do other kinds of like um um videos and all that you could also let me know i hope you've picked one or two things from this video and thank you all for subscribing thank you for sharing the videos thank you for you know just being here with me i really do appreciate all the love and all the like everything that you guys are doing and you know trying to encourage me on this journey so until next time it's still your girl Flo and i can't wait to like you know catch up with you guys again bye